Welcome to our kitchen. Today we prepare medieval lenten lasagne from Anonimo Venezianos Libro di Cucina and the Liber de Cucina, two cookbooks written in the 14th century. We start with ingredients. We need walnuts, flour, sourdough, sugar and spices, black pepper, cloves and cinnamon. We need the flour with the sourdough, two pinches of salt and water, until we obtain a hard dough. Then we let the dough rest for a few hours. We don't need the dough to be completely leavened as when we make bread. By adding sourdough to the dough, we obtain a softer and more digestible pasta, without the need to overcook it. As you can see, these lasagne are very different from those we prepare today. As we saw with the ancient Roman lagana we made a few months ago, which you'll find in the description below. In fact, medieval lasagne, and in general pasta, can be either leavened or unleavened, according to the cooks and physicians. In this case, Anonimo Veneziano doesn't specify whether his lasagne are leavened or not. We decided to follow the recipe found in the Liber de Coquina. But you can also prepare the dough without adding yeast. Meanwhile, we grind the spices, the sugar and the walnuts. In medical sources, pasta is considered a type of bread. And 15th century physicians, such as Michele Savonarola and Ugo Benzi, consider leavened pasta better for digestion and health because the addition of yeast partially changes the nature of the wheat, making it more temperate and better suited to human nature. For this recipe, we have used the sourdough, one of the most common leavening agents in historical cuisine starting from ancient Rome. But you can also use fermenting must, as we have seen in the past. Videos of making ancient sourdough and using must to make bread rice are listed in the description below. We roll the dough into a thin sheet of pasta and cut it into small squares about three fingers wide. Medieval pasta for Lent is rather rare in the cookbooks, since the preparations usually require cheese or butter. On the contrary, there are several recipes for stuffed pasta that completely exclude dairy products, meat and eggs. In the recipe of Anonimo Veneziano, the author uses walnuts instead of the cheese that we find in the Liber de Coquina but the composition of the plate is identical. In the latter source, layers of lasagne are alternated with cheese and ground spices. The lasagne must be eaten with a punctorium lignum, which is a wooden stick. The cooking methods for medieval lasagne are essentially two. They can be fried, like ancient lagana, or boiled, usually in broth, as in the Liber de Coquina, or in water, as in this Lenten recipe. To learn more about the history of pasta, check out our new book, Early Italian Recipes, Cereals, Bread, Pasta and Pies, with recipes from the antiquity to the Renaissance, and an introduction to the historical uses of cereals, basic preparations and ingredients. This book is the second in the series Early Italian Recipes, and the first was dedicated to vegetables, fruit, herbs and flowers in historical cooking. We cook the pasta in salted water with a bit of oil. We can cook the pasta immediately, or let it rise a little. The more it rises, the softer it will be. We arrange the lasagne by alternating layers of pasta and walnuts and dusting the last layer with spices and a bit of sugar. For information on late medieval cooking, check out our books Libro della Cucina Medieval Tuscan Recipes 
and the registron cuquine a medieval cookbook. The translations of Anonimo Veneziano's Libro di Cucina and the Liber de Cuquina are available on Patreon, with other translations of primary sources and articles on historical food. To support our work, you can also buy us a beer and purchase our merchandise. All the links are in the description below, along with a list of our books on historical cooking and the link to our Patreon page. These lasagne were surprisingly good, with a nice complexity in the blend of spices, walnuts and sugar. A dish very different from our usual pasta, also because the presence of yeast changes the flavor and the consistency, making the pasta very interesting to try. It is essential to use the right amount of sugar to balance the sharpness of the walnuts and it would be even better to sprinkle each layer with sugar and spices. But it's a certainly a dish that deserves to be rediscovered, to experience another way of making pasta. If you're interested in ancient foods and flavors, subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon.